In this video, I will compute the infrared and Raman spectra of the ethylene molecule using Gauss view and Gaussian. Double click Gauss view and then click this uh, R. This is uh, organic functional groups. The default is a formal functional group, but we're going to use a different functional group. Look for CH2 with a double bond here. It's going to make an ethylene molecule for you. You can make 1,3-butadiene easily by clicking one of the hydrogens, but I'm going to do a Control Z to undo. Now click Calculate, Setup. To do a vibrational frequency calculation, you have to optimize the structure first. So we're going to do OPT plus FREQ, and then it's going to compute the vibrational frequencies and also infrared spectrum of the molecule. To also compute the Raman spectrum, you need additional keyword here. So FREQ equals Raman. And then it's going to compute Raman as well. How about the method? We're going to use a more accurate DFT method than Hachi Falk. We're going to choose B3LYP. The basis set, uh, we're going to use a larger basis set, 631 GD. Uh, this means D type polarization functions on carbon. And we click Submit and Save. And then we're going to save this. Uh, I ran this calculation before, so I'm going to overwrite the uh, previous input file, ethylene.ggf. GGF stands for Gaussian job file. And I'm going to click Save. Overwrite it, yes. Submit the calculation, yes. Uh, the log file, this is one of the output files, already exists. Overwrite it, yes. I'm running optimization right now. After the optimization, this is running frequency. Gaussian job has completed. Do you want to close the Gaussian window? Yes. Uh, now, do you want to uh, open uh, one of these two files? Check file is a binary file. Log file is a text file. Both can be um, opened by Gauss view. The log file can also be visualized in Notepad or WordPad. So I'm going to just click OK here to get the check file. Uh, now you have the optimized structure here. This is the input. This is output. And let's uh, look at the bond distance here. 1.325. 1.330. So you need the bond distance is optimized. All right, check file. And then let's look at the results. We can look at the summary, charge distribution. Uh, this one will give you the uh, electron density, and this one give you the vibrations. Let's look at the summary first. It's going to tell you the method, the basis set, the energy, the energy gradient, the type of moment. The type of moment is zero due to the symmetry of the molecule with a D to H point group. And then let's click results and vibrations. Uh, click OK here. And you will see all those numbers in this video. Uh, there are six atoms, therefore there are 18 motions, 18 minus 3 translation, minus 3 rotation. You have 12 vibrational modes. And these are not really frequencies. Those are wave numbers in the unit of reciprocal centimeters. And you have this relative infrared activity here, relative Raman activity here. And if you see a non-zero infrared activity, the Raman zero, uh, activity must be zero, and vice versa. If you see this uh, non-zero Raman activities here, the infrared activity must be zero. There's a reason for a molecule with a inversion center, such as ethylene, the infrared activity and Raman activity are mutually exclusive. Now let's look at a few vibrational modes. Let's look at the first one, number 12, with the highest 
vibrational frequency. Start animation. And this mode changes the dipole moment, therefore it's infrared active. But it does not change the polarizability of the molecule, therefore it's Raman inactive. Let's look at number 10. Uh, this mode changes the polarizability, therefore it's Raman active. But the dipole moment of this molecule during the vibration remains zero unchanged, therefore it's IR inactive. Uh, let's look at some others. Number six, again, if you look at this vibrational mode, the dipole moment remains unchanged, therefore it's IR inactive. However, its polarizability changes, therefore it's Raman active. Can both IR and Raman activities be zero at the same time? Yes, it's possible. So over here, uh, this is uh, vibrational mode number four. And this one happens to be IR inactive and Raman inactive. Now I'm going to stop the animation and I'm going to show you the IR spectrum and Raman spectrum here. So again, you can see uh, the IR peaks and the Raman peaks are at different positions. Again, this is because of this uh, IR activity and Raman activity being mutually exclusive for any molecule with a inversion center. Uh, now I'm going to show you a, another uh, YouTube video I made before. Uh, this YouTube video titled Molecular Symmetry IR and Raman Activity of the Vibrational Modes of C2H4 explains why the Raman and IR activities are mutually exclusive. If you have a inversion center in the molecule, and then you can tell that uh, all those uh, uh, Raman active modes uh, have a G symmetry. All those uh, IR active modes, vibration modes, have a U symmetry. Why so? For this molecule to be uh, uh, infrared active during vibration, you must have this vibration modes with a U symmetry. Uh, either this one or this one or this one. You look for X, Y, and Z, which correspond to the dipole moment. For the vibrational mode to be Raman active, you look for a um, kind of non-zero uh, elements in a 3 by 3 matrix of polarizability. In that matrix, you have uh, diagonal terms x squared, y squared, z squared. The off diagonal terms are x, y, x, z, y, z. So if you see non-zero x squared, y squared, z squared, or x, y, X, Z, Y, Z. Uh, they all have G symmetries, and then you have Raman active. So again, uh, this uh, infrared active vibrational modes all have a U symmetry. The Raman active modes all have G symmetry. Therefore, they are mutually exclusive. Uh, what about a vibrational mode with a AU symmetry? So if you look at this AU symmetry, it's neither uh, IR nor Raman active.